Hello everyone, this is a lesson about temperature and heat. So the question I'm posing for today's lesson um, is, one of the questions is, are temperature and heat the same thing? And the simple answer to that is, no, they're not. So temperature, what temperature is, is it's a measurement of the kinetic energy that a substance has. So colder temperatures come from slower moving particles with less kinetic energy. And the, the more those, or the more the temperature goes up, the faster those particles are gonna start to move around. Um, so when we have uh, hot substances or things that we would have a high temperature, they have a lot of kinetic energy. The particles within them are moving very fast. So if you think of water, you think of really cold ice the particles, the atoms that make up the ice, the water molecules are moving very slowly. And as you start to heat up the ice, those atoms are gonna to start to move faster and the temperature and the kinetic energy are going to go up. So temperature is just a measurement of how much kinetic energy a substance has. Heat is the transfer of energy between substances that have a temperature difference. So um, if I were even gonna go put my hand on the stove, it'd be a very stupid thing for me to do, but my hand in the stove um, would not be the same temperature. The stove has much more kinetic energy. If the, um, the atoms on the stovetop are moving faster than the atoms in my hand, and when I lay my hand on the stove, um, that's gonna transfer some of that kinetic energy to my hand um, which is then going to speed up the atoms in my hand, which eventually will cause uh, a burn. So don't put your hand on the stove, um, but that is the kind of heat transfer um, when we're talking about atoms with or substances with two different temperatures. You could also, you know, put your hand on ice and you would be transferring your kinetic energy into the ice um, and, and sharing some of your kinetic energy with that. So temperature is a measurement of kinetic energy, and heat is the transfer of energy um, between two objects. Um, we measure temperature using thermometers. Um, so we have two basic kinds of thermometers, uh, the expansion thermometer, um, which has some kind of liquid inside of it. And when uh, the heat is transferred into the liquid in the thermometer, we either see the, th uh, the liquid expanding if the um, temperature is going up or um, contracting if the temperature is going down. Um, so that liquid inside, it's not water, um, that liquid inside either expands or contracts depending on the difference um, in temperatures between the substances or the thermometer in the air. We also have digital th thermometers which use little sensors to tell you what the temperatures are. And these temperatures uh, measure using different temperature scales. The one that you're very familiar with is the Fahrenheit scale, which we use in the United States, but most places don't. We, we don't use the metric system. Um, most other countries in the world use the metric system, which measures temperature in Celsius. And then finally, we have a third temperature scale, um, which is the Kelvin temperature scale. So Fahrenheit is the one that we're used to, and um, it's used here, it's used in the Cayman Islands and Belize, and basically everywhere else doesn't use Fahrenheit. Um, what the Fahrenheit scale is based on is that water freezes at 32 and boils at 212 degrees. So basically the guy that made up the Fahrenheit scale um, took a tube with some liquid in it, put it in some really cold water, marked the line on, on the tube where that would be, and then did the same thing with hot water, and then decided that he'd put 180 degrees between the two temperatures. So we have this very weird scale that, that just has some very random numbers on it, 32 to 12, 180 degrees between. It's not the very, it's not the best temperature scale. It doesn't really make much sense. Um, but it's the one where that we're used to and that we use in a daily basis. So Fahrenheit is um, one temperature scale. Uh, Celsius, um, his temperature scale 
um, is used pretty much everywhere else when you're dealing with like the air temperature. On this scale, we have two distinct points where water freezes and where water boils. But instead of 32 and 212, we have nice numbers like 0 and 100. Um, and basically, he was doing the same thing. He put a tube in some cold water and a tube in some hot water and marked 100 dashes between the two numbers and developed his scale. Um, so this one is, it, it makes more sense to me, at least, um, just because the numbers are nicer. Zero and 100 um, are nice round numbers. So Celsius is based off that. But then the, the best temperature scale to use when we're talking about science thing is, is the Kelvin scale. So Kelvin is used in science. It's the SI unit for temperature. And it's based on something called absolute zero which is the lowest possible temperature when particles or atoms stop moving. So since temperature is a measurement of the energy in a substance, how fast or slow the atoms are moving, if you get to zero on the Kelvin scale, the atoms stop moving. So this is really the only scale that's based on something that's actually scientific, um, which is that absolute zero number. Since we have three different temperature scales, there are some conversions to go in between um, these temperature scales. So the conversion between Celsius and Fahrenheit is up on, on the screen right now. It's really messy. Um, you would take your Celsius temperature and multiply by 9 fifths and add 32 degrees, and it's just a mess. Um, so if you had to do this, I think you could figure out how to type that into the calculator. but um, we all have computers in, in our pockets. We carry our phones. Um, I don't know a, an instance where you'd have to actually be able to do this conversion. Um, so my suggestion to you is if you don't feel like typing that mess in your calculator, um, look it up. Same thing with um, Fahrenheit and Celsius. We have that 5 ninths fraction minusing 32 degrees off there. The, the conversion's a mess. Use your resources. Look up the conversion. Celsius to Kelvin has a really nice um, conversion because Celsius has that zero as its freezing point. Um, and the freezing point of water, if you were to convert between Celsius and Kelvin, the freezing point of water would be 273 Kelvin. So when you're converting between Celsius and Kelvin, um, all you'd have to do is add 273 to your Celsius number or subtract 273 from, from your Kelvin number. So uh, let's say you had 100 degrees Celsius in Kelvin, you'd have 373 Kelvin. So this conversion is nice going between Celsius and Kelvin. Um, so, you know, you could very well look this one up too, um, but this one's just easy addition and subtraction. So when you're dealing between Celsius and Fahrenheit, by all means, use your computer resources. Um, you know, ask Siri on your phone what the difference is. Um, but then when you're going between Celsius and Kelvin, um, definitely you could do the addition and subtraction. So to practice this skill today, we have a little temperature conversion um, practice paper. This one has a lot of good information that I just went over. Some set points, so, so where water boils and your body temperature and Fahrenheit or Celsius, um, and then the conversion factors. So if you, if you want to practice all these conversions, that would be a great thing to do. Um, but the, the thing I want you to focus on the most is these three questions at the end. Um, and it kind of gives you a number and, and has you predict what scale they're measuring in and then converting from um, the, to the other two scales. So if, if you want to do the whole practice sheet because you feel like you need that much practice, you can. But I highly recommend doing these three at the bottom, um, four, five, and six. I'll be posting the answers to those so you can check your work. Have a good day, everybody.